Alright, hello, everybody. Um, if you're watching this video, then you know why you're here. Um, in this video today, I'm going to be showing you how to install and use the program um, World Painter for Minecraft. Uh, this program basically is a program that allows you to create and kind of alter seeds in Minecraft and create land structures like mountains and uh, caverns and canyons and all sorts of different structures, change blocks, change resource values, all sorts of things. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to whatever browser you have and then just look up World Painter and it will be right here and I will link this in the description when I'm done making this video but uh, just click on the link, go to this, download whatever version you have and that's it. Now I've only installed this, so I'm, I've already installed this, so I'm not going to do this. But when it does, just take, just go through the process. It asks you to go through, install the bit version, depending on what you have, or install that. I'm not even going to say it. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, if you have Mac, install that. Uh, Ubuntu, Linux, whatever. All the downloads are here, so that's all you're going to need to do. So once you've downloaded it. It should be right here. Um, I have it right here. Just open the program. You see a loading screen. <clears throat> Wait for it to launch. All right. So now that it's open, you can see that we have a pre-laid out sort of area to work on in this. Now, if you're not happy with this size if you're already noticing this is going to be too small for you because it gives you a scale down here that that I'm guessing that's an inch is every one inch on this is a hundred blocks so if you want it bigger the first thing you can do is um, change the dimension properties or you can go to new world and then create a new world from here and up the dimensions but we're just gonna keep it as the stock 640 because that's kind of the best size because it really the only thing I found this useful for is building um, specific buildings that you want to have a certain biome or certain land structure to build on or if you're building this for a PvP server and you want to change things and add certain land structures that make the PvP more interesting but uh, we're not going to do that we're just going to use the default one right here and most of the time, what you're going to be using is the raise and lower terrain tool. Now, this tool is very useful for, say, making mountains. Um, and you can see the little lines start to move as I raise the terrain. Now, left click on the mouse is to raise the terrain, and then right click is to lower it. Now, you can change the brush size by you're using your mouse wheel scrolling up is to decrease the size and then scrolling back is to or decrease the size is scrolling up and increasing the size is scrolling towards you so you can kind of alter the terrain like that now that's a little bit crazy to want to do something that big but usually you're going to want it around this size and you're just going to want to you know use this to make mountains there is a mountain tool for this but I don't like it because it just raises it straight up out of the ground like that and it just looks retarded so and you can probably already see the first problem that there is with this program when you first open it and that is you can't really see the scale of things um, you cannot really tell how big something really is because it's just a completely bird's eye view of whatever you're doing. And if you want to be able to see that easier, you can go to view. And then what I like to do is just show 3D view and just move this off to the side. You can see why I don't like using the mountain tool right there. I mean, it just looks like a little nipple sticking out of the ground. So we're going to get rid of that by hitting control Z if it would work. There we go. So we're going to get rid of everything we've done. So we're back with the fresh world. As I said, you have the raise and lower tools over here. Now the brush sizes you can change, obviously, like I said, by scrolling. But if you want to change the intensity of the brush, which is how much it affects the land when you hold it, you can go over here. So if I change the intensity to the highest, you can see that just a slight, just a short time makes it grow a lot. And if you turn this down, I do one right next to it, 
you can see the difference it barely alters it so that's if you want to make more like fine adjustments you can lower that if you want to make more massive adjustments first and then fine-tune it you can turn up the, the brush sensitivity and also on the side here you have um, different types of brushes and this is obviously just for creating different structures and uh, you can actually preload uh, in a newer version of World Painter. You can actually preload um, custom brushes uh, for images that you can. F if you find an image that is like white and black like this, it'll use the black part of the image to place the blocks, and then the white part is the blank areas. And so there's all sorts of different brushes you can use to get different effects of what you're trying to do. Um, over here. Again, you have more tools, like I already mentioned, you have the raise and lower tool. You can use this to set the spawn point, which is indicated by that little red dot that you can see popping up. That will be the main spawn point on the map where all players will spawn if you choose to. Uh, you make this a multiplayer server for PvP, or if you just choose to use this as your own survival uh, seed, you can set your spawn point by clicking this uh, using the spawn point tool right there. And then right here, you use this. You can use this tool to dry up any water or lava or any sort of liquid that you see that you don't want there. Um, you can use that. Or another thing that works to do that is to just, if I switch back to this brush, you can just raise the land until the water is gone, like that. And then that works just as good. But that tool is always there. And then this tool right here is to change the um, block types for the whole entire seed um, and you can change what layer it's at and you can remove layers and do all sorts of things and you can reset them with water and lava so that's if you want to change every block on the entire map at once but I don't recommend doing that because I kind of like the default blocks it comes with and then these two tools up here all these ones are for adding pyramids and different sorts of things like that, like different little, little tiny pyramids like that. You can see uh, rotated pyramids, and then you can use this tool to actually raise a pyramid out of the ground, which is pretty cool. Uh, you can see the pyramid right there. Um, I wouldn't really see a practical use for that, but it's just giving you options. And then these tools, you can flood land like this. It'll flood by level, so if you flood, if you click this on the highest level, let's say on this mountain, you see it'll flood the entire map, and you obviously don't want that unless you're for some reason obsessed with water, I don't know, but uh, we're just going to undo that. There's really no use for you to ever want to do that, but um, if you want to find a specific level you want to flood on, like you can see these little lines here, it's like I want to fill it to that line and then that just like that. You can use that and you can also do it with lava. So if you want to fill uh, this little area right here with lava or you want to place that water with lava lakes, then you can do that. Um, and then again, you have the smooth terrain tool which just kind of flattens the area out uh, if you want to build or it makes smoother mountains. And then this is actually the flattening, flattening tool. And you do this if you want to create, say, like an area to um, build on uh, in your seed, if you're creating this for building purposes, then you can use this to create a flat area to build on. As you can see right there, it's flattened this whole thing out, and it will do the same thing, say, on the pyramid. It'll flatten the area which I select out. So, it'll do that. Um, and as I said, that's for if you're planning on building on this seed. It works well for setting out areas. Um, and then over here on the layers, you can set different layers. You can mark out where you want caverns to be, like this. I, uh, I would go really slow, otherwise it'll just make little dots like that. Um, you can set where you want chasms the same exact way. Um, you can choose to lay down frost, and frost is good for if you want certain areas, say if I want it right here, uh, I want it to snow. Um, laying down snow blocks alone won't make it snow. You have to set frost, and frost will cause the, anywhere inside of that white area to snow. Um, thus, it'll turn the blocks covered. It'll make the blocks covered in snow, but it won't actually turn them into snow. 
Um, you can area you can set out the areas where you want the denser populations of resources, which is marked by that blue right there. So if I want that area to be heavy in resources, like if I'm making a PvP map and I want one particular area popular because it has more resources and I can do that. And I can set down a different kind of forest. So this is just the normal standard tree forest right there. It'll mark it out with that pattern. The trees aren't actually laid out in that exact grid pattern. Um, uh, but they will randomly, that's just showing the area that the trees will be in, but they will be randomly generated. Um, you can lay down jungle biomes, you can mark out where you want the swamps, pine forests, deciduous trees like I just showed. You can show where you want void. Um, again, just like by painting over the area that you want. Uh, you can choose to populate a certain area with certain minerals or anything like that you, with... Uh, with um, different sort of resources and just kind of random, it just sort of randomly generates things to put in that area. Uh, and then you can add layers right here, so if you want to choose to add one of these different terrain layers, then you can. And down here, which I just mentioned, is uh, where you can choose to add certain materials. So if I want this area up here to be sand, I can do that. And again, I, if I don't want it to be so randomly placed blocks, I can just change the intensity and I'll change all of that to sand and it does that with every other material so this material looks like bedrock, I believe, no it's mossy cobblestone but if I want this entire area right here to just be mossy cobblestone then I can make it that way um, so up here now I'm really not sure what these are but uh, really all the basic things that I've shown you are what you're going to be using most of the time to make your worlds so once you've actually created the world that you want and you're happy with the way it looks over here on the 3D image, which by the way, I would never use this world, it looks like shit, but this is just for demonstrational purposes. So if I go up here, if I make sure I have this window selected, and I go up to File, click Export, um, and you go over here to Export as New Minecraft Map if you're planning on actually using this map uh, to play on. Uh, you, in this menu, you can choose things like the underground materials. You can choose any material you want. I'm just going to leave it as stone. You can choose to make the world a bottomless world. Um, you can adjust the borders. So like I said, if you want to do a PvP map, you can uh, make a bedrock wall or any sort of wall around the entire map. Um, you can change the border into water. So if you want to make this area seem like it's an island and it's not just there there's because if you do not select a border if you click no border or void it will just cut off right at that line like you can see it it'll it'll just be an edge to the map and you'll be able to see all the resources but you'll be able to go off the map which is kind of weird so if you click water or bedrock then it will actually end the map there so you can't go outside of it um, in this tab you can change the um, caverns and chasms you can change the likelihood of them being there like you can click if you click chasms everywhere you can change the um, density of the chasms where they will be uh, you can change whether or not they will break the surface over here so if you want actual entrances to the surface two chasms from the surface, um, then you can click these. I always click these because it makes cool looking holes in the ground that are really, really big. And these caverns and chasms are not like average Minecraft caves. These are huge. These are massive caves and caverns. They're not the normal size Minecraft ones. So sometimes they can look a little bit dumb, like if you have a cavern or a chasm entrance underneath like the side of say a river like if there was one over here on the side of the lake it will look really dumb um, it will look like just a wall of water flowing into a hole but it never fills up and you can also click to flood uh, the caverns if you want to which I don't know why I don't I would not do that because caverns basically and chasms replace the default caves so if you do this pretty much every cave that has resources in it will be flooded with water so obviously I wouldn't recommend doing that and like I said you can change the density of the chasms and the caverns over here again you can um, change the uh, density of the different resources you can change the percentage chance of they will of that resource that you've selected will be spawned 
So these are all the default settings, and if you're doing a PvP map, I would recommend keeping these the same. So like, let's say, just for demonstrational purposes, we'll bump this one up to 50, and that means that basically more blocks will be diamond than they will than dirt and gravel, so yeah, I don't know, you wouldn't, it wouldn't be a good idea to mess around with these, I would just leave them the same. Um, you can change also the occur which levels they occur at, so you can choose. Um, I would also just, again, leave this level the same. This is from zero up to a certain amount of blocks. So you have all the default that everybody knows about, like diamond spawns from or is found anywhere between zero and 15 on the blocks uh, at the level. and. You can change this to whatever you want. I w again, I would just leave them the same. And then you can, again, do this. You, on this other layers tab, you can change the po density of the forests and the snow. Um, you can allow Minecraft to populate the entire terrain with resources, trees, water, just kind of randomly generated things. Um, and then up here, you can change the directory of the save, and you can change the name of the world, so we'll just name this Generated World 4, because I've made about three maps that I've actually liked in here. And then down here, um, you can change the mode uh, between Survival, Creative, and Adventure. You can include the chest of goodies, and if you're going to be on Survival and you actually want this to be a legitimate um, map like to play on, then I would not include this, because it basically includes everything for you to break the game. I mean, you, you spawn with... the chest contains things like diamond armor and diamond tools and end portal and spawners and all these different things that just sort of ruin the whole point of survival. So, But if you're doing creative like we are, just to show off the map, then um, you want to check that. And if you're in creative, you obviously want to allow the cheats so you can use different commands. You can change the different world types between default, super flat, and large biomes. I'm just going to leave it default. And you can toggle structures like uh, dungeons and spawners and things like that. We're going to leave that on. And then you want to click, make sure to leave this ticked, export everything. And then when you're exporting, it will take a little bit of time. It is pretty heavy on your CPU. Uh, it will take about a minute or so for it to export this entire map, depending on how much you've done to it. So I'm just going to pause the video here and then uh, come back when it is done exporting. Alright guys, so now that we're actually in the Minecraft game, we can go to our single player and you can see right here the world that we have created, or actually it's this one, called Generated World 4. Um, so if we load this world up, and we just kind of check it every, everything out, um, you can see the changes, one of the changes we made right away was um, this area where we replaced the grass with um, mossy cobblestone blocks. Um, you can see right here an entrance to one of the caverns, which, as you can tell, to me are a lot better to than the default Minecraft uh, caverns and caves that it generates. Um, their entrance is all over the place. So, if we just fly around here, you might be able to see a couple general things together, like right here where we place the sand, you can see um, just different little changes that we can make. It just kind of shows you how much you can really change with this map. Um, so here is the pyramid we placed, and as you can see, the chasms have also applied to the um, pyramid, and it's made some really cool looking uh, it's made some really cool looking um, land structures in the actual uh, pyramid. Um, and this is another one of those problems that I had mentioned before about it. It kind of looks stupid when you are uh, in the game after the game is loaded when, when there's caverns. It actually can make it look like there's just a wall of liquid here, and um, it looks pretty stupid to me, and it doesn't fill up. It does the same thing with water. Uh, I wish there was a way to stop that, but there really isn't, and it is worth it. So, now that you've kind of seen the changes that we were able to make within five minutes of 
just messing around with it. Uh, let's actually look at a map that I've spent time on and actually have made for a purpose, which is PvP. Um, so you can see in this map, uh, every single structure that you see, all these hills, this, these massive mountains, which would never be generated in the default texture pack. Um, all of them were made by me using the World Painter program. Uh, just This is just a good example of the sorts of things you can do with World Painter. Um, it really is am amazing what kinds of maps you can make with this program. And they all look really good. Um, like these sort of structures would never have spawned in uh, default Minecraft. Things like this, these massive caves, never happen, and it's just things that you can really only do within World Painter. Um, and that's why I recommend this program, and that's why I'm making this video to anybody who is trying to learn how to use this program. Um, it is a great program for doing things like these, making your own maps, altering them. Um, everything, like I said, you've seen in this world is all made by me uh, using that program. So. If you guys liked this video and you found it informative, um, please like the video. Uh, you don't have to share it. You don't have to subscribe. Well, if you want to subscribe, that'd be helpful because I am actually planning on doing other videos such as Let's Plays. Not just informative videos, but um, if there are any other so pieces of software that uh, you guys would like to know how to use, because I have used a lot, um, just leave it in the comments if you... Uh, if you liked the way I did this one. Um, like I said, I will be doing a lot more kinds of videos in the future, so if you want to see more of those, please subscribe to my channel. Like this video if you found it informative, and um, I will see you guys in the next video.